Do you want to know how to sync your 8-bit do NES30 Pro controller with your Raspberry Pi Zero W through Bluetooth? Then stick around, because you know what time it is. So the 8-bit do controllers are really great looking controllers. They feel nice in the hands. They're a little bit small for me, but they're really, really nice controllers. Uh, with the two analog sticks and the two buttons on top for the left and right each, I should say, this is a fantastic retro gaming console controller. But one of the problems that a lot of people have is the syncing through Bluetooth with their Raspberry Pi Zero W or Raspberry Pi 3. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you how to sync it properly and make it sync every time you reboot your Raspberry Pi 3 or Raspberry Pi Zero W. Now, if you haven't already, the RetroPie image that's currently available, which is 4.1, doesn't actually work with the Raspberry Pi Zero W. So I've got a fix for that and it's up here right now if you wanna go and see that video. But in saying that in the future, if it's up to 4.2 or plus, then you won't have to worry about this fix anymore. So one of the first things you need to do with your 8-bit do controller is you need to make sure that the firmware is up to date. Now at the moment, at the time of this video at least, the latest version is 1.72. Now I've already upgraded this, but to go through the update process, I'll show you on the PC now, so that way you can do it in the future. So the first thing we need to do is go to the 8-bit do website, which is 8bitdo.com. Once there, click on the support menu and choose your controller from the images on screen. Now you need to click on the gear icon underneath firmware. You can see the latest version for me is firmware version 1.72. Click on the link to download it. So one of the things with the firmware on the 8 bit Do controller is you need to use this cable. And the other thing you need to do is make sure that you put it into the firmware mode. And to do that, you need to hold down the start button and the wireless sync button for about five to 10 seconds. And then it will start flashing yellow. You need to make sure that you don't have the USB plugged in because if you do, it won't register that it needs to be put into firmware mode. So once it's flashing yellow, you need to put it into the controller and then into your PC and then start up the software. After you've extracted the firmware to its own folder, open up the executable file. If you plugged in your controller and the yellow light is flashing, you should see the button highlighted. Click on the USB update button and navigate to the files you just extracted. You should see a firmware.dat file. Select that and it will tell you what firmware that file is, which in this case is 1.72, and what firmware your current controller is. In my case, it's 1.71. Click on OK and this will start the flashing process. Don't touch the controller or PC until it is finished. Once it's completed successfully, it will come back with a message saying firmware upgraded. Click OK here and now you can remove your controller. Now that we've gone through the firmware updating stage, what we need to do now is we need to jump over to the Pi to actually sync it with the Raspberry Pi Zero W. So in order to sync this with the 8-bit do controller, you will need another controller or a keyboard set up so that way you can access the menus. So once you've done that, you need to get into the menu and then go down to Bluetooth. Once you're in the Bluetooth configuration menu, you need to firstly make sure 8-bit do mapping hack is off. Next, we need to make sure configure Bluetooth connect mode is set as default. If you go through this tutorial and it doesn't work, this is what you will need to change to see if it works for you. You have the option of changing to boot or background. Default works for my particular NES 30 Pro controller, so I'll leave it at that. Next, we need to make sure the controller is on and we press the sync or pair button so it's flashing blue like on the screen now. Once it's in pair mode, we can choose the register and connect Bluetooth device option. This will take a little while, but eventually you should see a MAC address come up. If this is the first time you've done this, then it won't have a name yet. So select this and it should come back as being successfully paired. Press OK, but before we get out of here, we need to do one last thing. We need to set up a UDEV rule so that each time the controller can connect properly. So select the Setup UDEV rule menu option and choose the 8-bit DOE controller. This will set the rule so each time we restart, the Raspberry Pi Zero W will recognize the controller. So now that you've done that, you can go back to the main screen and go to the Start button menu. And here we can go down to controller and we can register the new controller by holding down the button. Go through and press the corresponding buttons. When you do get to the left stick and right stick buttons, however, it can be a little bit tricky. So the first time you might want to skip this and then go back and do it a little bit later. So now that that's done, you are set up, but I'll quickly show you what happens when you do a reboot. Okay, so you can see there that the 8-bit do controller is registered and synced with the Raspberry Pi Zero W. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the start menu, go all the way down to quit. I'm just looking at my monitor offside so I can see what you're looking at. And we're going to restart system. 
and say yes. Okay, so I'll hold this up here so you can see what's happening, but what will happen is that it will try and sync again. And because it's in the reboot mode right now, it can't really do that until it fully loads up. So on the Raspberry Pi Zero W, it does take a little while for the system to reboot or even start up. And that's due to it only having one uh, CPU core and 512 megabytes of RAM. So the limitations between the Raspberry Pi Zero W and the Raspberry Pi 3 are fairly great. So while this is loading, I will tell you that you can get up to about Super Nintendo uh, games emulated on the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Anything above that, like PlayStation and so forth, in Nintendo 64, it's not going to run that well. So we just saw the RetroPie splash screen, and now it's up to the emulation station splash screen, and you'll notice that the controller has stopped flashing. So once it does move on, we're in the menu system now, and if I press the A button, it'll start flashing rapidly and then stop. Now it is fully synced, so if I press start, there we go. It's resynced after a reboot. Awesome! So one of the things with this 8-bit do controller is that it does require things to be done in a certain order and very specifically. So make sure you follow this tutorial to the letter. Let me know down in the comments if you had any trouble with this. I'll see if I can help out. Also, let me know if this worked for you down in the comments and also give it a big thumbs up too if it did. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for more great videos and if you're already a subscriber, make sure you hit that bell icon too. And as always, imagine, learn, create.